Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at a quick abstract painting inspired by Ray Missingman. Sorry if I pr pronounced that incorrectly. So this is inspired by a piece um, that Ray did on the Creative Jumpstart 2019 uh, online course. So if you haven't accessed that, it's an amazing course with lots and lots of inspiration. And this is my quick take on what she did. So all credit goes to Ray, but it was just such a fun technique to play with and certainly broke me out of my comfort zone, particularly at the end when you end up with lots of different pieces that you can choose from. Basically what I'm doing is just wetting a large piece of paper with some water, putting on some acrylic paints and just wetting them down. So basically you're ending up with acrylic watercolour. It's really loose and really fast. And I think that is one of the things about this process that you don't really think about it all that much. Now, um, what I'm starting off with is some cool colours in the background, so blue-greens, and then I'm heat setting this. Now, the good thing about acrylic paints is once they're heat set, they're permanent, so you can then layer them up. Um, if I worked on this with my next colour set and mixed them in together, I'd start mixing colours and it would look really strange and you start getting those browns coming in and I want to keep this as vibrant as possible so I make sure that the first layer is dry and now I'm re-wetting it and you can see that those colors in the background aren't moving and I'm going in with my favorite colors which is the Dina Wakely uh, fuchsia it's a beautiful sort of purpley red and I'm being quite generous with it and you can see I'm sort of blocking out the background of the colors I had but that's okay because it's all to add to the layers and different colours. I'm also blotting off with some paper towel just to add some texture in as well because I love having texture in my work. Um, and then going in with some different colour paints. I'm going in with a, the yellow which again is, I, I think all the paints I'm using on here by one are Dina Wakely paints. And with this paint I didn't water it down. My brush is wet but I actually put it on almost straight paint. The reason for that was I wanted it to be a little bit more opaque. All the other colours have been fairly um, transparent but I just wanted that little bit of opacity as I was doing it. So I'm going in now with magenta and you can see all the colours are sort of sitting within that colour wheel of warmer cool colours. The journal that you can keep seeing sort of popping up in front of you is my Use It Up journal and any excess paint that I had on my paintbrush I just painted onto pages in that journal ready to make some new backgrounds for another day. Now I'm just going in with some stencils just to wipe away the background and to bring back some of that colour from below. So by wiping it away when it's still wet I'm sort of bringing back some of the colours uh, from underneath that first layer that was set. It also just adds, again, a little bit of texture to the background and a little bit of interest. Now I'm going in with um, a star stencil, which is one of my favourites. And um, again, using a wet wipe to wipe away any excess. The wetter the wet wipe, it does help. So if you've got a fairly juicy pack, it does help wipe away the background. Also, if the, um, the acrylic on top you're working with is quite juicy it does help as well um, if it's starting to dry you get a different effect so just be aware of that if you've got also you've got paint on your stencil you can transfer that back on to your artwork as well and I did that in the bottom left hand corner you might have seen me turn over my stencil and just press any excess paint I had off on it so as I was doing this, I was thinking, yeah, this is lots of fun, but I'm not sure I actually like what I've done. I think I've just made a kindergarten, pa kindergarten painting. Um, but in the end, I was actually really surprised with how it came together. So I decided that um, one of the banes of my life is white space and covering up all my background with stuff. So I decided I would actually get my white paint out and repaint in some white. And I'm really glad I did it in the end. It sort of added a real sort of difference to my page. So I'm painting over some of the bits that I liked. Um, being a little bit more sketchy with how I was using the paintbrush and using some different size paintbrushes from what I was using before. I actually also go in with my fingers as well just to add a different texture to it. 
and this really sort of helped tie the whole piece together I think. I'm also going in with some stencils and again removing some of the paint just to bring back some of the background so it ties it all together. Even though the white's there you can see it's part of it all, it's not sort of something big on its own. And again I was just turning over that stencil so I could stamp off any extra paint I had on it. So when I'd finished doing this I was like yeah, it still needs something, so I decided to go in with some um, Stabilo Oil Pencil and to do some writing. No, I didn't. I went in with this paint, and this is what made the huge difference to this painting. I was very, very lucky and very blessed that for my birthday I got a beautiful um, fluoro yellow paint from Derivan, which is an Australian company. Uh, so it's just a student grade acrylic paint, but it's actually... Um, like using a glaze over the top. It's very, very transparent. But when it went onto the page, it just made all these colours pop. Particularly, you can see in the top right hand or top left hand corner with that going over the turquoise, it just made this beautiful combination of colours. And it, I've now been using it on pretty much every page I've been using since. Uh, I just love it. And it's just for that extra. Um, glow on the page. It just does these magic things with the acrylic paints underneath to make it just pop off the page. So um, just going in with my heat gun and heating it up just to make sure it's all set because then I wanted to put some mic making over the top and again this is something um, that Ray is really famous for as her mic making. She's written books on it. Um, she makes it look so easy Making random marks is not easy. You can sort of have an arsenal of things that you would like to, to do and make it look really sketchy and, you know, effortless. Um, but it does take work. So uh, a lot of people sort of say to me when I'm doing mic making videos, oh, but, you know, I can't do this. And I understand the, the challenge to it. Just have a go. If you really don't like it, you can paint over it or at the end you'll see how you can hide bits that you don't like. So the other tip that I have is holding your pencil up near the end so you're really, really sketchy with it and that does help. I also sharpened my pencil before I did this so I got some quite fine lines. Um, and I'm also changing the direction of how I'm doing those little random, they're almost like tally marks and you could use tally marks on this. Now, um, I chose to use the Stabilo Oil Pencil because it's just got this magic property that when you wet it, um, it turns basically into like a black ink and stains your page. It's just beautiful, the effect that you get. It changes somewhat when it dries again, um, but when you wet it, you can just get this amazing look. One of my favourite bits of doing this though is I decided to be a little bit brave and start putting these marks on the circles that I sketched out and I really liked how they looked, just varying the different heights of them, um, almost like sort of creating barbed wire I suppose on, on a fence, um, just for something different. Then going in and finishing off with some more sketchy circles. Now I'm just spritzing uh, the page with some water and you can see that black just intensify on the page and I loved it. Um, I think unfortunately I went back in with a paper towel because it wasn't drying fast enough and pretty much took off some of the paint again but you can see here that it's just sort of darkened it up. Now I had one of these, I've just packed up my school room and I have um, ended up with some of these frames and they were really really useful because I could then go on this piece and look at all the different um, pieces that I could have from the one piece. And it just blew my mind that one piece of artwork could look completely different depending on how you framed it. So um, coming up is a um, still shot of each of the different um, parts of the image that I um, framed up. I still haven't decided which my favourite. I think this one is, but I'm still not 100% sure. So if you do have any favourites, please let me know in the comments below of which one you think you would frame. Um, but this, um, yeah, it was just too hard. If you do have access to uh, a frame to have in your studio though, it's a really 
handy piece of equipment to have because it can completely change your point of view on a piece that you really don't like to being a piece that you absolutely love when you can just move it around. So these are the close-up shots of that one piece of work just framed in a different way, moving it around my page to get a different um, perspective on what I've done. And you can see they all look incredibly different. You can also see that pop of fluorescent yellow on each of the pages just makes such a difference to the entire piece. So I hope you have a go at doing this. It was a really simple technique to do, but it was just so much fun in the end. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye for now.